it's uh, so nice to be here. I hope you are enjoying all the uh, enriching sessions. Uh, my name is Rahul Bharde. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, how we are using uh, customer science to uh, enable uh, personalized interactions with our customers. A uh, bit of a background, uh, uh, my professional background. So I uh, am head of analytics at uh, Jubilant Foodworks and I also am part of the uh, executive management. Uh, for those who don't know Jubilant, uh, so we uh, operate uh, Domino's in India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. We also have 50% stake in the Domino's business in uh, Turkey, Russia and Azerbaijan. Besides that, uh, Dunkin Donuts, that's the uh, coffee and a Dunk, uh, donut brand. Recently launched Popeyes, that's into uh, uh, fried chicken QSR. Uh, we have our own brands by the name uh, Hong's Kitchen and uh, Egdam, which are into uh, Asian and uh, Biryani cuisine. We are also present in the uh, FMCG space with our Red Book range by the name uh, Chef Boss. Before Jubilant, uh, I was uh, uh, heading up analytics for Asena Retail. This is into uh, women and girls uh, fashion retail. I set up the uh, uh, Bangalore based uh, center for the company. Uh, before that, uh, uh, close to a decade with a company called Dhanambi, and I had a chance to work with uh, words leading retail and uh, CPG companies, um, uh, worked with uh, um, multiple countries as such. I was very fortunate to work with amazing brands all over the world. And over the years, uh, over the decades, I've, uh, I've sent uh, millions of uh, uh, personalized communications to the customers. Uh, and today I'll be sharing some of that experience and how we are applying that at uh, Jubilant Foodworks. Uh, let me... Uh, uh, Quick, quick introduction uh, on a personal side when I'm not crunching the numbers or uh, making PPTs really. I, I like outdoors, uh, I cricket, uh, badminton, uh, tennis. I also like uh, uh, cycling, running, swimming, uh, hiking. I'm a foodie and I love to cook as well. Um, with that now, let's get into topic. I would like to start with an ad that's from late 80s. Uh, some of you may not have been born back then. It makes me feel very old, but it's an excellent ad and I think uh, if somebody can just play the ad. So let's watch the ad and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, sound is not there. Uh, the, this used to be a Doodarshan back old then only one channel uh, would be available few times in a week really. And this was a, it's a very, very amazing ad. I love this ad. Uh, uh, okay, so while the... Uh, Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, some issue with the audio that's been uh, played. Three minute video actually. Um, hope it comes up. It's come back. Oh, Deepika ji, aye aye. Liji, aapka sab saman tayar. Ye nahi. Wo Nirma Super Nelly Tutaji tikiya. Lekin aap to wo hamesha mehengi wali tikiya. Leti thi. Jab wahi mehengi tha, wali quality. वही सफेदी वही छाक कम दामों में मिले तो कोई ये क्यों ले वो न ले मान गए किसे आपकी पार की नजर और निर्मा सुपर दोनों को अब निर्मा सुपर धुलाई का सुपर दाम दाम फिर भी द रिटेल एंड कंज्यूमर्स ऑब्वियसली हैव इवॉल्वड अ लॉट मोर इन द लास्ट फ्यू डेकेड्स फ्रॉम गोइंग टू द सेम शॉप यू नो फॉर योर मंथली नीड्स नाउ इफ यू मूव द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज now uh, you can place an order anywhere really uh, so from dealing with uh, the person you know the shop you know to you know ordering from a million or million sellers uh, all over india choosing from a thousand product to choosing from uh, 50 million products as such interactions have changed so uh, but the essence of personalization the, you saw that the shopkeeper knew that lady very very well is that still relevant and how easy or complex it is getting in today's world so uh, you know, uh, uh, some stats from a survey conducted by McKinsey, 70% of the customers actually uh, want to uh, want companies to know them on a personal level. The personalization could be in the form of meet me where I am. Uh, you could today watch Netflix anywhere. Uh, back in the days when you have to wait for entire week to watch Jungle Book, now you can watch from anywhere, uh, the Money Heist part, for example. Uh, 
in US we piloted uh, delivering a pizza to the uh, lat long of a customer where he was ordering from. Knowing my test which is giving me relevant recommendations, uh, everybody wants to feel special really uh, which is in, in the form of very personalized meaningful rewards and checking it with me you know when I am taking time out to take a feedback or a complaint, how do you come back really. Not just consumer wants it, uh, there are business benefits, 78% of the customers are likely to re uh, repeat purchase and recommend the uh, brand who has uh, personalized brand interactions. So your CMO wants it, your CFO wants it. These projects get good interactions in the company, trust me on this one. Uh, so now, uh, you know, uh, let's go back to the ad again and we'll try to take some frames from the ad and we'll try to talk about what does it really mean in the today's world of personalization. So when the customer walks up into your platform, you know the person, you know, uh, personally and there's a personalized welcome message. In today's world, when your stars are aligned and when the cab driver shows up for pickup really, you give a OTP, you will see a personalized message of welcome uh, on, onto the cab really. The, her grocery is already ready. This is in the form of, you know, the person knows her so well, he's kept that order ready really. Today, that is in the form of, uh, you can see that in the form of previously ordered items for more matured personalization engines, you will see that the cart is already built. Tesco UK, for example, they have something called as my usual. So when customer logs in, their basket is already pre-filled based on what customer is likely to order as such. Uh, so if you look at the aisle carefully, you will see that the Tikia has been given disproportionate placing on the on the aisle. Obviously, uh, this is not the share of the sales really, but that definitely has nudged customer to pick up the and substitute the item. Uh, that essentially what we called as product discovery or uh, substitutes. Uh, lastly, uh, he's confirming because uh, shopkeeper knows what she likes. Uh, and you can see the examples. When I first time ordered from Mantra after uh, COVID, I moved from medium to large size. Mantra asked me, you know, uh, you sure you want this large uh, size because you typically order medium size. Yes, yes, where there is a lot of return really, this makes sense. How do you really confirm uh, or provide the social stats for what you're really ordering? And obviously, last not, but not the least of saying thank you really. So how do we really bring this personalization where knowing customer is hard because obviously you have a uh, uh, lot more choices available for customer and how do you really make it the personalized uh, experience? So I'll talk about a framework. The framework is fairly broad enough to apply for any business. I will obviously put the lens that we are looking at it from a jubilant food work standpoint. Uh, I call it the power of one uh, because we need to know the customer on a one to one basis to be able to provide the most meaningful experience. The first foundation for personalization really is starting with why you are in the business, what purpose you are serving, what customer problem you are solving really. In our case, we talk about what are the outside food occasions, why customer is going out and eating the food or why is customer ordering the food. Knowing those meal occasions is a starting point for any kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 personalization. The second part essentially is that of all those needs, which needs we are serving well or which needs we are uh, posing to serve the best, that becomes part of my strategy. And where should I focus in terms of my products, customers, channels? And that becomes the, the foundational need really. And then knowing which need, which meal occasion customer is trying to fulfill, I can really become very, very relevant to customer needs. Uh, the meal occasions could be on the variety of the forms. The meal occasion could be that my kids' friends are over for, uh, for night over really, I want to order pizza for them. It's the weekend indulgence, cricket matches playing, it's a celebration, don't have time to cook really, it's a cheese craving, uh, you want to have lots of uh, veggies, for example. So all those could be the locations that uh, customers are ordering food from. The second layer foundation essentially is going to be knowing your customer strategy, who matters for your business, knowing customer life cycles, uh, which customer is in which stage of life cycle. Is it a new customer, a growing customer, a uh, stable customer, declining customer, how many customers are dormant for you really. That becomes foundation to say, where do I need to invest my effort disproportionately? <laughs> On those two pillars really is what we sort of start to add context on, on how to win. Uh, how to win is where uh, we start creating the customer DNA. 
a lot of these are in the form of customers observed or latent behaviors. Observed behavior like what is typically customer like to order, what's their favorite product or how much they typically spend when they order on a weekend or a weekday for example. Or it could be a latent behavior, latent behavior in the form of uh, what is the propensity of a customer to respond to a discount or uh, do customer like to order variety or uh, they have a fixed taste that they want to order. The next layer that we are building essentially is on the future actions. What is going to be the most likely next action customer will perform? It could be for example, you, you, your first pizza ordered was margarita, we know that you are going to repeat it with for example, uh, a farmhouse or you might repeat the same pizza again knowing that or which customers are likely to decline for example, where the churn is going to be. So, uh, knowing those future actions gives me signal on where should I intervene. On top of that, obviously, we overlay the user collected information. This can be in the form of their preferences, their allergies, their personal milestones. All of this obviously has to be contextualized in terms of the real world information. Is it a festival, India Pakistan match, weekend, weekday? Uh, so, knowing who matters, what matters for the customer. Uh, what is going to be their next action and the uh, contextual information is what is at the heart of every personalization. Be it a, a in session recommendation, be it a coupon you send, be it a feedback you ask for, be it a feedback you resolve. And I am going to talk about one case study in a few minutes and how we are applying it in a, in a world. But before that, I do want to take a few minutes to talk about the architecture, the personalization engine that we are building. So, at the heart of it obviously is data, uh, that is where everything really starts. So, looking at the data from what customer is ordering, their browsing behavior, their uh, feedback they are providing really, uh, what we have talk, uh, spoken to them about in the past and how they have responded, the contact history, all of that becomes the foundation for all of my models we are building. So, a personalization engine has multiple different components. Uh, User persona, we spoke briefly about the preferences, the, uh, the latent behaviors per se. Uh, meal occasions, uh, this is applicable for a user level as well as a cart level. So, based on what user has ordered in the past, we know that what kind of meal missions, what kind of meal needs customer has come to or based on what they are building in the cart, we know that what kind of meal customer is about to order for. Customer lifecycle models, uh, these are models about can I predict after the first transaction which customer will become high value with me or can I predict my important customer is likely to decline for example. All the models that talk and predict customers future action in the short or a long term becomes the signal which are used for triggering the action from our side. Uh, product affinities, uh, personalization recommendations, those are essentially in session nudges you provide to customers. Uh, relevancy models and offer models essentially determine your likelihood of buying a certain product or responding to a certain type of discounts. So, the science essentially is what powers, how do we really activate against it? What action do we take using these signals, using this uh, customer information really? So, we are uh, working on uh, six big use cases. We spoke about, we saw earlier uh, the basket was ready for Deepika ji when she entered. We are calling it as a magic card. Uh, again, this is uh, right now in the development stage, but uh, can I preempt what customer is going to order and hopefully soon this will be available on our platform uh, uh, for you to uh, end use on your one click ordering per, uh, per se. Home page, uh, how do I make the home page personalized? It could be in terms of layout, in terms of the categories you see, in terms of the ordering part. Navigation, how do I make it easy for you to navigate as you are trying to explore or you are trying to place an order or you are trying to uh, track your order. Cross-sell, upsell is where the nudges you, you provide as you start to uh, build the offer and the personalized offers and the content that you actually provide. Um, so, obviously, uh, a layer required is to have a continuous experimentation to understand the user feedback and make sure that our models continue to learn and get better. Uh, obviously, I think uh, the two uh, North Star we are chasing essentially is how do we really improve the conversion and the customer experience. So, uh, I will talk about one case study here. Uh, so, the objective or the problem that we are trying to solve is how do we really make it easy for user to find the items. Uh, we today offer more than 120 different menu items on our app. Uh, this is in the form of pizza, in the form of sides, beverages, 
uh, deserts per se. How do you make it easy for customer to find out what they are looking at? So, the sequence in which menu appears to customer, how do we make it personalized and relevant for the customer? So, we have built uh, different types of models, uh, HRN as well as some of the collaborative filtering for cold start to give the most meaningful uh, sequence for customers and we continue to get better in our sequence prediction. Today our top slot, we are able to capture more than half the, uh, half the convergence in the top slot. Top three uh, is able to convert at a two third, uh, more than two third of the, of the clicks we are able to capture that. So these products are getting more and more meaningful. Obviously I think uh, uh, longer the history we have, better our models tend to be, uh, but we also started to test out now some of the cold start problems where the history isn't enough available really and we're seeing a decent success with respect to those uh, those ones as well. Um, and uh, what you've seen essentially results have been really, really good. You've been able to, I can't share the number given we're a uh, publicly listed company really, but we've seen a very significantly, uh, uh, significant improvement in terms of uh, the convergence and obviously the uh, improvement the conversion leads to a uh, improvement in the uh, top line as well uh, and obviously the customer experience as well. So uh, we are on the journey, we are starting really and we are starting to personalize uh, different aspects of the uh, customer engagement and we will continue to sort of uh, do so. Um, that is all I wanted to share. Uh, thank you for being a patient uh, and a hopefully curious listeners. Uh, in case you have any questions, I would happy to uh, uh, answer those.